Hello and welcome to the Black Country History Vlogs, our new series today. Every Sunday with new videos, talk about history, stories and many more. Anything you would like to talk about, drop it in the comments and we will discuss it. So yeah, today's stories are going to be James Grove and Sons Limited, St Peter's Church in Cradley and also History of Hells Owen. So let's get into the video and enjoy. So the first topic we're going to be talking about today is James Grove and Sons Limited which is one of my favourite ones to talk about. There is much history behind it as it dates back to 1857 when James Grove established a business from making buttons in his hotel room to manufacturing a business in Hales Owen known as Bloomfield Works, later becoming the new modern factory which is still there today, MJ Sections. So my granddad worked for the company for many years since he was the age of 16 and he always taught me stories about James Grove and Sons from his memories of working in the Bloomfield Works to when he worked in the new modern factory which is still there today. It's really interesting for someone to share these stories because it helps with people generations on to understand how the business really operated back then. I've never seen this one made, I'll be honest with you. I'll tell you how I think it's done. What a work in there. I'm working it out. The outside's turned first. And your back, your back will be a normal dome on the back. Then you go into your second stage where the outside edge there would be turned. That would leave like a top hat. It would then go through the barreling process to be polished for the simple reason the outside's polished and the centre is dead. Then go back to the machine again, where you would turn out the inside, leaving it sandblast but matte. That would leave then a square top. Would then go into an indexing machine. You see these little slots, all them little slots would be put in. The, the material being casing was white base. White base is used a lot for dyeing. And I know it's white because it's showing white, so. You would then go back into the machine where the top would be turned off, showing the white. So you get the outside polished, the inside bat, velvet, all the slots put in indexing, and then dyed, and then the top turned off, showing the outside white edge. So you can see the amount of work that's involved. And of course, with the cost you can understand now why they wouldn't pay the price today. So here we are, we've got something interesting to show you today about James Grove and Sons Limited. So this is actually the Black Country Bugle on Thursday the June 21st, 2012. 50 years on the buttons, you can just see pictures right the way here. Chris and Roy in the museum back in 2005, just zooming to show you. I always remember my granddad talk about the story about visiting that museum. You've got on the bottom here, Peter Grove on the left, congratulates Roy on 50, not out. Zooming in so you can just see that photo. And you've got here, talented craftsman who devoted 50 years to the firm, Roy Taylor, my granddad in his youth. And he says there, Roy Taylor in later life, his knowledge was described as the best in Europe. So my granddad was an excellent craftsman who devoted 50 years to the firm. He was a tool machine setter and worked as a supervisor on the shop floor from my knowledge when he actually told me. So it's really interesting to see all this stuff sharing his information about the company. What's really interesting, you can just see right away here, the old James Grove and Sons office block only recently demolished. I always remember that I used to go to Windsor High School. Coming out of school, I always remembered walking past the Starbird Road and seeing the old factory that remained there. I always remember James Grove and Sons Limited since I was very young. My granddad used to take me over the factory. I lived on the grounds basically for the factory as a set of houses that stretched on the side of it on the Starbridge Road. I always remember the gardens for those. You had the old back work units that stretch at the back of the gardens. I can always picture it to this day, my nan's garden. 
So I've got an old photo to show you as well. So this is an old aerial photo showing the, the houses that stretch at the side of James Grove and Sons Limited. Mine actually used to be an old fashioned sweet shop, I believe. Some history that really does date back with it. It's a shame the houses have really got knocked down and not no longer there anymore. But let's get into the photos and show you what it was actually really like. So here's some of the photos that I actually want to share with you. So this is actually the first photo, which is really interesting. My nan's old garden on the Starbridge Road. Once all part of the James Grove and Sons factory. You can just see, if we zoom in on this photo, you've got the old work unit sidings just right away at the back. Got my mum in the photo. At the far back of the garden, you can also see some of the work units stretching right away at the back. So this one's actually our garden, 128 Starbridge Road. It is very uh, smaller than Manan's garden, surrounded by a bit of fencing. And at the back is also James Grove and Sons of Factory lurking behind those trees. You've either got the football ground which is stretching further over the back. I've got a better photo to show you of it actually. So this one's also another interesting photo to show you of our old back garden. You can just see the conifer trees at the back. You've got the football ground lights in the distance. A very old tree that used to be at the back of James Grove and Sons Limited. I think many people who passed on the Starbridge Road may remember the old tree actually being there. But you can just see some old units sticking right away at the back of the conifer trees slightly. But it's a really nice old photo. I always remember my garden looking like that. Really old. So that's actually where the new units are being built today on the Starbridge Road. So this is also another photo what's really interesting. So I know my old house used to be an old fashioned shop, but you can just see this is actually the style of the front windows overlooking there, going all the way across the old walls. It really did look old fashioned, that house. I mean, if you stepped into it today, it really does date back a bit. So this one's also another photo inside the house. You can just see my granddad Roy, who worked for James Grovenson's Limited. Got my nan Linda, who also worked for the company. She was a cleaner for the old factory and also the new factory. So it's really cool to see that. And I like going back through all the old photos to see what it really did look like back then. The old photos of my garden. Just a shame I haven't got any photos of the actual house of 128 Starbridge Road when I was actually living there. I might have to dig through some of my nan's photos and see if I can find some of those out. But that's actually James Grove and Sons Limited. We will actually come back to James Grove later on in these videos, tell you a bit more history about it. If we can actually find the old photos out of my nan's ones showing the house, I will dig those out and I'll definitely show it. Yeah, I've got a book on James Grove and Sons Limited as well, what my nan's got, so we'll cover that in another video. But let's move on to the next topic now, which is St Peter's Church. This one's a really cool one. So that is actually footage of me ringing the bells at St Peter's Church. It was a really cool opportunity to get a chance to do that. And what it is, on the evening I went all the way to St Peter's Church to film a series exploring the black country on Crowley and Collegate. And when I turned up, the door was actually open for the bell tower. I heard the bells ringing. So I went round the other side and I noticed the door was actually open to go inside the church. A nice lady came up to me and said, well, I'll take you up to the bell tower and also let you have a bit of bell ringing. So I went all the way up, really enjoyed it. It was nice to meet the team and an opportunity to get a chance to do so. But this is actually footage of the church inside. It was really beautiful in there. The church is always locked in the daytime, but every Thursday and an evening, you get a chance to actually go in there and do a bit of bell ringing if you ever go by. Definitely feel free to pop in and say hello to them. Really a lovely bunch, but this is actually the church explore, which is really cool. Just talk to them about a bit of black country history. Even got a chance to ring the bells as you just seen. I am gonna come back and come with jewels. But wow, it's a really opportunity to see the stairs here to come up all up and down. You can see you can come to here when it's actually open. So if you do see the door open, don't be afraid to pop in and the beautiful sounds of the church. Wow, nice bell ring that was. Wow, look at the architecture up there, the stained glass windows. You see that one right the way there, a bit more closer. Got three beautiful stained glass windows. Just got right on the bottom of there, St Matthew, St Mark, St Luke.
see the wooden beams right away at the top. The patterns into those, if you can see them, going all the way down. Even the column supports have got that pattern right the way there. A bit of colour into them. Really lovely, so I'll go close to that in a minute. You just see how old these windows really are, zooming in. So that's actually uh, St Peter's Church, it was really lovely to explore inside, I really enjoyed it. So it is locked in the daytime, but only open at certain points at the time. On a Thursday evening you can actually go to the church and do a bit of bell ringing, so if you ever do pass by, definitely pop in and say hello to them, they're really lovely. You may even get a chance to go around the bell tower like what I did, which was really cool. And this is actually a little bit of footage of the bell tower explore, what I did, so enjoy this little bit. However, these were actually, I'm sure they were a set that was made Venice way. Venice. And it was an actual, well, I'll double check, but yeah. it was a local lady that paid for the bells. Right. So these actually went on, I think, a tour of Venice, I think. So, um, yeah, so they went over. But I can double check and get you all the info. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'll definitely come back to another bell ring, yeah. Yeah. And then the local lady, bless her, she actually died before she actually heard the bells rung. Oh, so bless. So she actually paid for the bells to be installed. Um, so yeah, so this is obviously the makeup of the bell, but there's the inscriptions yeah. in the actual bells. So that's actually St Peter's Church cover. Let's move on to the next one now, which is actually a brief video of the Hells Owen history. Enjoy. Hells Owen is recorded in the Doomsday Book of 1086 as being larger than Birmingham. The manor and town was known as Halla, from the Anglo-Saxon word, Hal, meaning nook or remote valley, until it was given by King Henry II to Welsh Prince Dabbath Ab Oib, and became known as Hallers Owen. The parish of Hales Owen, which incorporated other townships later to become independent parishes, was an exclave of the county of Shropshire, but grew to become a town and was transferred to the jurisdiction of Worcestershire by the county's detached parts, Act 1844. Included in the boundaries was the ancient village of Brettel. In 1974, under the Local Government Act 1972, Hales Owen was incorporated into the new Dudley Metropolitan Borough, in the metropolitan county of the West Midlands. Hales Owen was once served by a railway line, in reality two lines which met at an end on junction at the station. The first was a branch of the Great Western Railway from Old Hill to Hales Owen, opened in 1878, followed in 1883 by a section jointly owned by the Great Western and the Midland Railway, though worked mostly by the latter, linking the town with Northfield on the Midland Railway's Birmingham to Bristol Main Line, with intermediate stations at Rubery, Huntington, and a workman's halt at Longbridge serving the car factories, not to be confused with the present Longbridge station. Being largely rural in character, the line failed to attract much traffic and regular passenger services ended between Hales Owen and Northfield as far back as 1919, and between Old Hill and Hales Owen in 1927, though the workmen's trains continued to serve Longbridge until 1960. The line is now lifted, but the track bed can be seen close to the town, although there is no sign of the station. The goods shed remained until recently. Serving as an industrial unit though, it has now been demolished. Class 2F060 freight engines shows the direct linears that ran through Midland and early LMS design. One of these is seen at Hales Owen, a joint station where a branch from the Midland main line four miles to the north of Blackwall ran to Hales Owen to an end-on junction with the Great Western from Old Hill on the Stourbridge to Smethwick line. The locomotives were shedded at the Midlands Bourneville shed and only these two Fs and smaller one Fs 
were allowed to work on the line due to weight restrictions imposed by the spindly Dowry Dell viaduct. Midland trains ran no further than Hells Owen, but Great Western Pannier tanks worked through to the Austin works at Longbridge with non-advertised workmen's trains five days a week. This part of the line was jointly owned. Hells Owen itself was at the foot of steep banks in either direction, and trains had to be banked. This is the cause of the weight restrictions, Dowry Dell Viaduct. Hales Owen had much industry such as Hales Owen Gas Works, Stewart's and Lloyd's, Summers Forge, and many coal mining industries in the old days being Coomswood Colliery the largest in the area. Hales Owen has seen many changes over the years from revamps of the shopping mall, changes to the town and a expansion of residential areas. In the eastern part of Hales Owen is Lisos Park, which is considered to be one of the first natural landscape gardens in England. The 18th century poet William Shenston designed the garden, beginning works in 1743 and continuing until his death in 1763, transforming existing farmland he had inherited after his parents' death. Today, the parkland is Grade 1 listed, as it is of national importance. The local theatre and a Weatherspoons public house are both named after William Shenston as are at least two roads in the locality. Nearby are the ruins of Hales Owen Abbey, founded in 1215 by Peter Des Roches, Bishop of Winchester. The dissolution of the monasteries saw the abbey pass into private hands in 1538. The abbey was the subject of an archaeological evaluation by Birmingham Archaeology and is now owned and managed by English Heritage. In 2007 and 08, Hales Owen underwent a £30 million regeneration of part of its town centre, which has included the construction of a new Asda supermarket located in the Cornbo Centre, together with a new multi-storey car park, a rebuilt bus station and improvements to the road layout. It's amazing to see how Hales Owen really was compared today with its modernisation. So it's really nice to see the history of Hales Owen. I really do love covering that, the old photos, even going over old ordnance survey maps. It's really interesting to see the area of where you really live. I mean, here where I live, used to be old coal mines. You had Whitley Colliery right away at the back. And when you look back at the old ordnance survey maps, it really does surprise you. I mean, I have got an old air raid shelter right away at the back of the garden, but it's completely filled with rubbish, so you can't get access down to there. I was planning to see if I can get inside, but there's absolutely no way. But it's really cool to see what you have in your gardens and all the surrounding areas. It's really amazing. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a nice way to engage with the viewers on my channel to talk about history, various other things, stories, or talk about future content from my channel. So every Sunday there's going to be a new video for you talking about different things from black country history to, like I mentioned, various stories or anything you want me to cover drop it in the comments and we might cover it in future videos. But here we are in a nice conservatory which has been recently built by my dad. It's really lovely. Let's give you a little bit of an explore of it. So here we are. This is the conservatory. It is a nice afternoon now. It was raining really bad earlier on. You see all the raindrops on the window right away at the top. You've got the palm tree sticking right away out and it gives you a nice overview sitting here to spot the wildlife once more to see the garden, lovely plants on tree. I just really do love the palm trees planted many years ago when they moved in. You see we've got plants up here, got cacti, nice tomato plant growing, really lovely stuff onto here. You can just see plants over there. You even got some plants here as you can just see. Got a banana plant. And this conservatory's been built really well from the extension from the house. You see a bit of water's tricking all the way in, we've got to do a bit of fixes with this. Do a bit more painting onto it, but it's really lovely. So this is actually a little studio we're going to be using for filming these little videos. 
but I hope you like it. Drop it in the comments what you think about it as well. It's been constructed really well. Even got a new shed built in my garden at the moment for my bikes, as you can just see. Storing my bikes in there just to keep them dry. But yeah, lovely garden overall. Oh, time for a can of coke now and a relax. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Smash the like button. If you're new, subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned next Sunday. Going to be another one for you. But yeah, for the meantime, the business outdoors out. See you soon. And see you in the next Explore in the Black Country and Black Country History Vlogs.